staying with us here at 430. I'm Tom Durian. The spring election is today and we'll have live team coverage all throughout the afternoon and evening for you. A race that we're closely watching is the race for mayor of Milwaukee between acting mayor Cavalier Johnson and former alderman Bob Donovan. Let's get to our chief political reporter Charles Vincent live at Central Count this afternoon. Charles. It's a busy place, Tom. Thanks. The winner of this race will go on to fill the remaining two years of the term left after Tom Barrett resigned from his post in December. He now serves as the U.S. ambassador to Luxembourg, but served as the mayor of Milwaukee since 2004. Now, this means the city will be electing its first new mayor in nearly 20 years, and acting Mayor Cavalier Johnson, the Common Council president who won the seven-person primary by 20 points faces former alderman Bob Donovan. Now, the race in the Democratic stronghold of Milwaukee is officially a nonpartisan race. Former Mayor Tom Barrett spoke with our Rebecca Clough and shared some advice for his successor. His advice for the next mayor of Milwaukee is that they go to the state lawmakers to get help financially, specifically with increasing uh, fi finances to help with the increase in the homicide rate. We also talked to Barrett about his new role as Russia's invasion of Ukraine. You can see our entire interview at TMJ4.com slash decision 2022. Now, the number of people you'll see today at your polling location is carefully calculated. Milwaukee's Election Commission says they expect that number to be around 25 to 30 percent of the voter turnout. Uh, right now, the city is fully staffed for the spring election, but workers are already being recruited for the fall election season. Andrea Albers shows us what a day at the polls is like. Nearly 1,500 poll workers will help run polling sites across the city today. Your site is determined by your home address. It is just a good way to see what the neighbors look like <laughs> without seeming nosy. Jokes aside, poll workers like Shannon Romero take pride in the role. She began volunteering in high school. Now 24, she's been back every election since. I think a lot of times people are committed to being, you know, the face of their neighborhood and to be able to come back every few months or even just like once a year, depending on the elections. Some are volunteers, others are paid. As a poll worker, you can earn up to $220 for a full shift. Be warned, it's a long day, typically 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Still, there is quite a bit of retention. Paula Jones got started in 2015 when she moved to a new neighborhood and showed up to vote. And so I signed up to become a poll worker because I wanted to be part of the team because they were positive and wonderful and I, I just, it was just a glorious experience. Many familiar faces at Milwaukee's poll sites were not able to work during the pandemic and the election commission says younger folks stepped in. Pre-pandemic, the average age of a city poll worker was above 60, but it dropped to 46 during the 2020 general election. People were just really committed to being a part of like how we can make voting easy or how we can make it accessible. And fun is part of the equation too. Jones says her favorite moments are welcoming first time voters. We, you know, kind of try to make a big deal about it and um, have them take selfies and and um, sometimes we have a little bell to ring and we kind of announce a new voter. It's really exciting. Andrea Elbers, TMJ4 News. All right, Andrea, thanks. Now, we asked poll workers, what's the biggest source of confusion on Election Day? They told us voters trying to register at the polling place who are turned away because they don't have the right documents. So let's help you out here. Here's a reminder of what you need to register to vote at your polling place. You'll need to bring a proof of residence document, which proves that you live in Wisconsin. And that, in, that can include a utility bill, a residential lease, a concealed carry license, or a paycheck. You can also show an electronic version of one of these documents. Also a reminder that Wisconsin requires a photo ID to vote. That includes your driver's license, your passport, a tribal ID, and a VA or Veterans Affairs card. One of those will work. Election officials want to remind you that you cannot use ballot drop boxes for this April election, and it's too late to put your ballot, absentee ballot, in the mail because ballots have to be in by today, not postmarked. If you haven't returned yours yet, 
you'll need to drop it off today at a central count facility if your city has one. I'm at the one right now in Milwaukee. Now, I'll have more regarding this election coming up on News at 5. But, Tom, some breaking news here just announced a few minutes ago that they are more than halfway through counting the absentee ballots. In fact, Claire Woodall Vogue saying 62 percent of the absentee ballots, which is about 28,000 down here, have already been counted. So they're moving along. So a lot of the ones they had already uh, maybe received over the last uh, couple of weeks and days, they're, they're done with counting, which is good news there. All right, Charles Benson. Down. Yeah, and keep in mind, they couldn't start counting those until this morning. So that's exactly. why they feel, feel like they're making progress. You know, a lot of clerks would like that law change, but we'll have to see where that goes. All right, uh, Charles Benson live for us this afternoon. Uh, all the resources on how to get out and vote as well as results, all you have to do is uh, pull out your smartphone, scan this QR code right on your screen. It's going to take you directly to our elections page at TMJ4.com.